joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Look at this field of wheat. It's certainly one of the most beautiful scenes we could ever imagine. But don't fool yourself. In among the wheat, tares are also growing. Can you tell them apart? To the naked eye, it's almost impossible, because as they grow, they are identical. This is why, in his parable, the Lord Jesus taught his disciples that only time would show the true identity of each one. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. That's when we see the difference. When wheat is ripe with fully formed grains, it bows down with the weight of its grains. But the tares, which are poisonous, produce no grain and do not bow down. Instead, they are clearly seen among the stalks of wheat because they stand up straight. This is the time of separation. The tares are pulled up, and the wheat is gathered into the barn. When we look at a crowd of people in a church, everyone appears the same. They all pray, sing, raise their hands in worship, and even speak of the things of God. But only those who are born of the Spirit have fruits of righteousness and bow down, like the wheat, before the will of God. But Christian tares are proud and do not accept discipline. They do not bow down, but stand up straight because they like to appear holy while their inner selves are full of poison. It will always be this way. Wherever there is wheat, there will be tares to confuse, to poison, and if possible, to even cause the wheat to be pulled up and thrown into the fire. Only time will reveal what is inside each one. When we go through battles and deserts, when we are shaken up and even crushed, we reveal who we are inside. If we are wheat, fruit appears and remains. But if we are tares, we will refuse to bow down and reveal our true selves. Hello, my friends. A very good morning. And may this be the best week of your life. May it be the best week of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a moment. I'm just going to deactivate the comment section that you may not be interrupted and that you may understand and comprehend and hear the Word of God. So, I would like to speak to you today about the subject, trusting in God. One thing is for you to have faith, and another is to trust. We can give a very simple example for you to comprehend what is faith and what is trust. For example, faith is like when a plane takes off. The plane takes off, we call that faith. It's the strength of faith, the power of faith. Now, when we reach the top on the autopilot mode, then the person will have to trust. So it's that trust, that certainty, that conviction that the plane will not fail once the plane hits the autopilot mode. When it's on the autopilot mode, the pilots, they are at ease. The pilots do not touch anything else. They're just there monitoring 
the flight. So this is faith and trust. Faith is the takeoff. Trust is what maintains faith at flight. Now, the Bible says that blessed, blessed, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed, happy is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. You see, the scripture says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord, meaning trust twice. You trust and you make the Lord your trust. Look, when we trust in God, we're at peace. It's the trajectory of the flight of the plane once it hits autopilot, once it hits autopilot on cruise mode, then the pilots are at ease. People sleep in the plane because there is peace, there is ease because the plane is in its route to its destination, as is the person who trusts in the Lord. They have peace within themselves. Although the others don't have peace, the others feel fear, they're afraid, they're shocked, they are unease, but we are at peace. During this pandemic of the coronavirus, the world is on its knees. The world continues on its needs, even with the vaccine, because no one has security. No one trusts fully in the vaccine. No one trusts because they know that the person is immune for a while. But what about after? They will have to take another dosage. Yes, so give me another dosage. But what will this benefit the body? No one knows. So, this is the fear of many people, especially the scientists. 40% of the North American and German people, they said they won't take the vaccine, they're afraid of it because they don't know what will happen in the future. So this manner of facing challenges, circumstances of the problem make people to be filled with fear and doubt. But when a person trusts in the Lord, and makes of the Lord his trust, then he is, he is at peace with himself. He is at peace with himself. Being at peace with himself, it's obvious that he will be at peace with God. First, peace comes from God. Then it comes from ourselves. So when a person trusts in God, God gives to that person the condition to be in peace with herself, that they would not live uneasy or nervous or anxious. They take the necessary care and precaution, but they trust in God. They trust in God. So he says, the prophet, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Meaning, when the Lord is the hope of the person, there is perfect peace. For 
He shall be like a tree planted by the waters. When the tree is planted by the river, by the water, it gives its fruit at the right time, which spread out its roots by the river. So the man who trusts in the Lord is like a tree which is planted by the waters which spread out its roots by the rivers. It goes down to the river banks and will not fear when the heat comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit meaning with or without pandemic the one who trusts in the Lord is established firm founded on the rock this is the faith which trusts. When you have, then you have this peace. It's true and it's a fact that for you to take possession of this trust, you have to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus in an unconditional manner. And the reason why many who call themselves Christians live a life which is destroyed because of all of this, because they did not have the faith to take possession of a certain blessing. Oh, I was healed of this, of that, as the ten lepers. The ten lepers were healed. All of them had faith to be healed, but only one returned to be saved, meaning only one returned to maintain his faith, trusting in God, and only he was saved. So it's not enough, my friend, for a person to receive grace and try to live with that grace oh I know that God is with me he healed me he did this he did that he delivered me from drugs but the person has to continue I know people who you certainly know as well who were set free from addiction they were set free from drugs the worst of them all but they transformed, they were set free, they were healed, greatly blessed. Then what happened? Then they stopped trusting, they put it aside. They believed in their faith. They believed that their faith was sufficient and did not take care on, of rather maintaining that which set them free. And what happened? They went back to their previous works. They went back, as the scripture says, they went back. They went back to the mud. So there are many who went back to the mud. Why? Because they had faith to be blessed at a certain period of time. But they did not maintain this faith. They did not trust in God. Here, the, promise, the prophet says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. He didn't say, Blessed is the man who has faith in the Lord. No. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Look how marvelous. Look at how marvelous this is. Trust. So, I will say to you something, my friend. I've seen many miracles in my life, but many, many, but many, many miracles. I saw people being transformed and etc. But, 
Unfortunately, I have seen few maintaining themselves in the faith with trust. Unfortunately, shamefully, this is the reality. So, as I'm used to saying, it's pointless for you to conquer. If you don't establish what you conquered, you will lose it. So it's trust which maintains our conquests. So the tree is planted with the river, with the water. It's there. It doesn't leave there. Its roots are always near the waters. So much so that that water is secure. But the other trees, which gave fruit, manifested its fruit, but after they wanted to enjoy the world in this, in this life, they ended up being dry. They're dying out there. This is the reality. As the case of the nine lepers. The nine lepers died. As all of them died. The other died. But one maintained his faith, his trust in God. So you who is watching me in this moment. And you're facing problems, difficulties. You with series of problems. Whatever your problem may be. You had faith to reach a determined benefit, a blessing, but at a certain moment, you don't have that same faith, that same fire. Then you grew cold and cold and cold, and now you're here fallen, downcast, bent over, and etc. Why? Because you lacked you lacked trust. Trust is a person, the tree planted by the waters. And this is the greatest difficulty of people. Because to trust, for you to have faith to receive a determined miracle, it's at that moment, that instance. It happened. You had faith. But for you to maintain that determined blessing, you have to trust. And trust, how is it? What can I do? How can I make the Lord my trust? How can I make the Lord my trust? I keep quiet inside of me or I appeal inside of me that conquering blessings or not, my Lord is alive and he will guard me for the rest of my life. This is a trust. I don't need to see him. I don't need to feel him. I don't need to touch him. I don't need to see his miracles. I have the certainty that he is with me. And many requests, which you have, I also have. Don't think that I'm a person. Oh, Bishop is a fulfilled person. Personally, I am. Personally, I am. But it's obvious that there are many things which we have not conquered. We have not conquered. With all the faith which people say I have, I have not conquered. But one thing I know, I know that my Redeemer lives and He is with me. And in His time, He will hear and help and answer my cry out. We call this trust. Trust. <laughs> this trust, my friend, is a gift. It's worth more than the gift of tongues. It's worth more than any other gift of the Holy Spirit because it's something permanent, eternal. Praise God. I hope to have helped you. I hope that you have understood. I hope that you have comprehended that you don't live in the illusion of a conquest which just happened, but you live a faith which is rational, intelligent, 
and permanent. Which is the faith that makes us to trust. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. What we offer on the altar represents what God means to us. Abel did it right when he treated God as the first and most important thing he had. And it is the same today. While some see it as a burden, others see it as an opportunity to honor God, placing Him above everything else.